The Volkswagen ID Buzz trendily redefines what a large family MPV can be for the new EV era. Practicality is sacrificed on the altar of fashion, but hey, this EV's fun but sensible, Envira conscious but desirable, which makes it very unusual indeed. The ID Buzz doesn't leap forward with the same pace as some EVs, but that's not to say it's sluggish. The e-motor and battery combination fitted here are familiar from other Volkswagen Group products, but they're not had to propel so large or boxy a car before, and the way they cope with the setup is impressive. That motor develops 204 PS and is mounted at the back, nicely mirroring the combustion setup used by the classic Volkswagen buses this model references. That's a layout based on what the MEB platform determines, rather than any great sense of nostalgia from the engineers. The big 77 kilowatt hour battery centrally placed upon this advanced chassis should be able to achieve up to 258 miles from a charge, though given the size and substantial two and a half tonne weight in play here, you'll need considerable throttle restraint and constant use of the most frugal eco drive mode to get anywhere near that on a regular basis. The other primary drive settings are comfort and sport. Surprisingly, at least to some degree, the Buzz can actually deliver both comfort and a little sportiness. It feels like the premium product its price point demands, and in fact is one of the best riding electric cars we've driven. Body rolls kept tight through corners, and the level of refinement is excellent, not just for the MPV class, but any class. We're not so impressed by the lack of brake energy recuperation options. There's just an extra B-gear selector function to heighten energy harvesting off throttle. But in every other way, the ID Buzz is a revelation to drive. That high commanding driving position will appeal to many drivers too. And even if they can't hope to achieve the quoted range figures, charging rates will help them get back on the road quickly. Capability of charging at up to 170 kilowatt DC on high power charges means a public top up from 5 to 80% takes half an hour. At home, the ID Buzz can charge at up to 11 kilowatts AC for a full charge in seven and a half hours. How has Volkswagen managed to make an MPV this appealing? Whichever way you look at it, this is a remarkable piece of design. The result is anything but dull to look at, somehow retro, without looking it. It's as much the proportions as the overall style that reflect the classic VW bus look. At 4.7 metres long in this short wheelbase form, the Buzz is over half a metre longer than the old Type 2, but there are neat little design touches that help along the way with the retro vibe. A blacked out glass house that creates a floating style roof, huge aerodynamic flat face 19 inch, or as in this case, 21 inch wheels, super short overhangs, and three gloss black D-pillar streaks, a nod to the rear air vents found on those old classic bus models. Plus, for a large MPV, there's an outstandingly sleek drag coefficient of just 0.29 CD. And most models will be ordered with a multivan style two-tone paint finish like the one we have here. It's all distinctly unvan-like, though, if you do actually want a van, there's always the ID Buzz cargo version. That won't be offered with the longer wheelbase you can ask your dealer about with this MPV model. So, achingly trendy on the outside, will it be equally avant-garde on the inside? Let's take a look. Overall, we think you'll like what you'll find here. You sit much higher than you would in a comparably priced mid-sized SUV above all those batteries. And a large, almost upright windscreen allows for lots of light, as does the enormous expanse of glass down each side. Slim A-pillars and huge front quarter lights all contribute too. There's a completely open lower floor so you could walk across and get out of the passenger side should you feel so inclined. And you can also walk back between the front seats, or at least you could if you remove this central so-called buzz box, a multi-storage package that easily detaches from its floor clips when you don't need it. 
The bright, friendly decor isn't particularly practical, but helps with the general feeling of spaciousness. And there's a slim, illuminating ID light panel at the base of the windscreen that'll be a talking point at night. The digital cockpit instrument display bucks current trends by being just 5.3 inches in size. The much criticised centre infotainment screen, offered in 10 or as in this case 12 inch sizes, actually works quite well. But the volume and temperature sliders beneath it are awful, as are the switches on the awkward touch sensitive panel by your right knee. Still, the important stuff's properly covered, the seats are excellent and there's a huge amount of cabin storage. OK, let's take a look in the rear. Access, as you'd expect in an MPV, by sliding side doors, which, as an option, can be electrically powered. You might want that option because they take quite a slam to manually shut and you don't want to have to keep worrying whether the kids have done it properly. Once you're comfortable inside, you wouldn't think this car was based on the same MEB platform as Volkswagen's relatively compact ID4. As you can see, there's no lack of occupant space back here, as you'd hope given the lengthy 2,989mm wheelbase length. What's a little more disappointing is the use of a conventional bench here, rather than the three individual seats you'd normally get in a purpose-designed MPV. Still, at least, unlike in most fully electric crossover models, this bench slides by up to 150mm, plus the backrest also reclines by quite a long way. At this point, if we were testing the long wheelbase version of this model, we'd be showing you access to the third seating row. But for our market, the short wheelbase body shape doesn't offer that option. You'll need plenty of rearward space to operate the vast tailgate. Tight spaces in multi-storey car parks will be an issue. And with the base variant, you have to pay extra to get it power operated, which is virtually essential as it's quite heavy. It rises to reveal a low loading sill and a potentially enormous 1,121 litre space, more than twice what you get in a comparably priced electric SUV. On this plusher style spec model, much of the lower part of that space is taken up with this multi-flex board, but you can remove that if you wish and have somewhere to store it. Most of the time, of course, you'll leave it in place, which would be convenient because with this suspended floor fitted, the nearer part could be angled up so you can slide these canvas storage trays in and out. One for the safety kit and luggage nets, the other for the charging leads. Should you want to use your ID Buzz like a removal van, the rear bench backrest can be, of course, folded forward. If you do fold the rear bench flat and remove the multi-flex board, then up to 2,205 litres of space would be available. And in summary, well, for years, sales have fallen away from MPVs and SUV numbers have rocketed. This is the first car in a long time that will point some customers in the opposite direction. It has enough substance to back up its style and further additions on their way to expand the offering. It's pricey, but that will put few off who would otherwise have been in the market for a premium SUV. And you never know, this Volkswagen might give them quite the buzz. <laughs>